Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. In this one I'll be talking about GPU pass-through in CentOS 8. For this guide you will need a PC, preferably a desktop PC with a minimum of two graphics cards. An integrated graphics card is sufficient for the host but the guest will need a dedicated AMD or an NVIDIA GPU. Also, you will have to enable the virtualization extensions in BIOS, VTD, VTX, on Intel or SVM and IOMMU on AMD. Let's get started by getting our installation up to date. Let's become a super user and I'll be using yum update and now that our OS is up to date let's reboot and in the next step let's download the script that will do all the heavy lifting for us and I'll leave the link in the video description so clone or download Download zip, we'll save it, open our file explorer, downloads, extract it here, and there is our script, pass through helper, CentOS, okay, let's close this, let's open our terminal, and uh, now let's become a super user, let's change directory, to okay. home, the name of your uh, user, downloads, and CentOS master. Pass through helper, CentOS master. Okay. Next, let's make it executable. So GPU pass through dot sh. So chmod plus x GPU pass through dot sh and let's run it gpu pass through okay it will download the required packages and uh, you will have to up, uh, update your grub you will have to type in a couple things but we'll get there once the script gets there okay so now this line that ends in quiet will type in depending on whether you are using amd or intel amd or intel underscore io mmu equals on and rd dot driver dot pre equals vfio dash pci and one more kvm dot ignore underscore msrs equals one okay escape colon wq enter okay now that this is complete let's reboot okay let's become a super user lspci dash v and let's find our graphics card. So in my case, it's an NVIDIA 950. And here we have the graphics card itself. Kernel driver in use is VFIO-PCI. And same for the audio portion. Okay, so let's move to the next step. Let's get started working on a new virtual machine. Virtual machine manager. Admin password. And let's create it. We'll be using an ISO, which you can download from Microsoft's website, and I did that already. Browse, I saved it in my downloads. Forward, yes. Let's give it eight gigs of RAM. And Let's give it four CPU cores. It doesn't matter, you can do whatever you want. 
40 gig hard drive we'll be creating and we'll have to customize it okay so Q35 that's what I like UEFI don't use BIOS unless you have to for some weird reason so generally you don't description CPUs you can change how many cores the topology RAM we did that and you can change it later boot options for now I will manually boot from the CD-ROM drive uh, SATA that's the disk we created earlier during the setup process CD-ROM will be our Windows uh, ISO tablet will remove it will be passing through a GPU so we don't need that display spice we don't need that you can keep that and install Windows with the virtual display and then delete it and add your graphics cards later. But I'll delete it and just use the graphics card from the get go. Okay, so we deleted all that stuff. And what else? Channel Spice, we can remove that. Okay, so what do we need? We need our graphics card the one that we passed through. So we will find it here and I, I'm using a 950, the GPU itself and then the audio portion. And audio portion. If you are using uh, the current generation, the 2000 generation of graphics cards, they also have a USB controller and something else some other portion so you have to generally have to add all of them together but for regular gtx's two portions rtx's four are made up of four parts so next uh, what we want is uh, usb devices you can pass an individual usb device from here usb host device but i'll be passing an entire controller, USB controller. So let's go back to PCI host devices and I know what I'm passing through. I will be using one of these, this one, I think. We'll see, if it doesn't work, I'll have to change. And again, if you make a mistake, you can always redo it later. Uh, if you want to know what you can pass through or what you can't, you will have to look into your IOMMU groups and uh, I have a video on those and I think I'll be making an additional video later about IOMMU groups. So, but for now, pick your USB controller and then additionally, you can also pass through an entire, either a solid state drive, like if you have an NVMe device or a whole a hard drive controller if you have one that's available for pass through, you just have to find it right here and pass it. Maybe something like one of some sort of an, as media might work, or you will just have to check your motherboard if it's if there is something available. Many motherboards, especially if you have like X299, will have an as well the ones I have. Uh, once I have worked with have an as media controller often that's just sitting there and is actually available to be passed to a virtual machine so depends on your motherboard okay what's next we'll cancel this and now we'll have to launch the virtual machine and uh, so let's do it but first let me show you what often happens and people think it's not working you launch your virtual machine and if you don't press a key fast enough you will end up with some sort of an error message like this make sure you either see uh, the input or the output from your virtual machine in real time or you can just start pressing some any key like a space bar on your keyboard that's connected to the virtual machine while it's booting and you're not seeing it in order to catch that so let's reboot it and let's try again so this is finished let's shut it down 
Okay, and now, before I forget, let's change the boot order from SATA CD-ROM to SATA disk or whatever hard drive you're using. Apply. And if you have an NVIDIA card, you will have to do this, uh, well, unless it's a quadro. So, Versh, edit, Win10, and that's the name of my virtual machine right here, Win10. So, whatever your name is, that's what you enter there. Enter, and we'll need to do this. We'll go to... Arch Linux Wiki, and I'll leave it in the video description, and we'll copy these lines, vendor ID, and we'll paste it in between the Hyper-V tags. Okay, one, and the next one would be the KVM. And that goes after the Hyper-V tags. And now we'll boot up the virtual machine. Okay, so here is our virtual machine. Uh, doesn't look exactly right, but that's normal. The resolution is kind of off. So let's open up. Let's see, do we have NVIDIA control panel here? Yes, we do. And it already downloaded while it was uh, Windows downloaded among the updates. If, if it doesn't do it for you, then you just need to download it manually, the driver. So, and we'll change it to 1080p. That's what I'm using. I just need to find it. Apply. And hopefully it goes through. Okay. So, our virtual machine is pretty much up and running. Let's look at the control panel. System and device manager. So, here we are. NVIDIA graphics card. Our QEMU hard drive. And all the other stuff is there. Yeah, that's your basic virtual machine. You can tweak it if you want to, make it better, but this should uh, get you on the right track. So that's that for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.